Good morning, guys. The way we're going to do these lectures is I'm going to start with a argument or a key concept, and I'm going to use examples to prove that key concept. And that's the way I'm going to deliver your information throughout this entire course. So let's begin. Our first key concept is that over time, as native groups migrated and settled across North America, they each developed unique and increasingly complex societies because they adapted to and transformed their diverse environments. So first we're gonna talk about today, different native societies adapting to and transforming their environments through the use of innovations in agriculture, resource use and social structure. So first, we're gonna talk about the spread of maize or corn cultivation from present day Mexico, moving northward into present day American Southwest and beyond um, and how that supported economic development, settlement, advanced irrigation, and social diversification among different native societies. First, we're gonna talk about the Pueblo, and this supports maize cultivation. The Pueblo were descendants of the Mogollon, Hohokam, and Anasazi tribes. They trace back 7,000 years. The, uh, the Pueblo were nomadic hunter-gatherers who transformed to their environment and became farmers. They lived in the four corners regions of the United States, um, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona are the present day states where they would have been located. The Pueblo, even though became farmers, they still hunted, but they began to expand their agricultural ventures. So they grew maize or corn, squash, beans, and they raised turkeys. Um, the Pueblo built complex irrigation systems to bring water to dry places. They built stories tall apartments out of sandstone. Each pueblo, which means village, um, acted as an independent community. Um, and many different pueblo tribes shared languages and customs, but not all the pueblo were the same. Each pueblo or village had one to two chiefs to govern. Um, these chiefs were in charge of special affairs like war, hunting, and religion. Um, and, and furthermore, um, the Pueblo were also governed by priesthoods or secret societies. The Pueblo tribes had clans and they were a matrilineal society. Um, so each different village or clan um, were led many times by women. Women were more respected than in the North. Um, women in the Pueblo tribes owned homes and gardens. My next example are the Navajo. Also, they transformed their environment to become farmers because of the cultivation of maize. The Navajo would have been located in present day New Mexico and Arizona, and they've been around since 1500. They traded and grew maize and corn crops, as well as made woven cotton blankets. They traded those for bison meat um, and tool making material with Europeans. Um, the Navajo were actually farmers as well, or sorry, uh, shepherds as well, and they used sheep for clothing and food. This was the largest tribe of Native American Indians. The Navajo had small homes made of sticks, mud, and bark called hogans. The doors faced east in each of their homes so the sun would shine in. Um, and the Navajo set up trading posts of handmade items in order to barter for materials in Spanish towns, and that was around the year 1600. My next point that I wanna make is that native societies responded to the aridity or the dryness of the Great Basin and the grasslands of the Western Great Plains by developing largely mobile lifestyles. So these are tribes who did not necessarily become farmers. They were nomads, they followed their food. First, we're gonna talk about the Sioux. The Sioux are also seen in writing as the Dakota. So if you see Sioux, think Dakota. If you see Dakota, think Sioux. Um, they came from an ancient people around 800 AD who later moved north to the Ohio area around the 1200s. Because there were too many trees in that area, um, the Sioux grew corn and sunflowers and changed mainly to hunting and gathering in order to get the majority of their food. They ate wild rice, they hunted deer, rabbits, they gathered berries, bird eggs, and wild plants. Um, and the Sioux made a living by quarrying pipestone, which they then sent down the Mississippi River and sold to their southern neighbors. Around 1400, the Sioux moved west to Minnesota and eventually encountered French traders. And again, the move was to follow their food, whatever they were hunting. Then we have the Apache. Same idea, hunter-gatherers, nomads, because of the dryness of the Great Plains. The Apache migrated from Canada to the Great Plains area 
They ate buffalo meat. They used hides from the buffalo as protective clothing. This was one of the first tribes to actually learn to ride and use horses when horses were introduced because of the Europeans. The next point I'm going to make is that in the northeast, the Mississippi River Valley and along the Atlantic seaboard, so this darker green area, some societies developed mixed agricultural and hunter-gatherer economies that favored permanent development of villages. So first we're going to talk about the Iroquois Confederacy. The Iroquois Confederacy was made up these, of these five nations along the upper New York area who united for protection. Um, the Mohawk, the Oneida, the, oh gosh, Onondaga, Onondaga, I always butcher that one, the Cayuga, and the Seneca. They created a confederacy for protection, um, and they developed a common council formed of clan and village chiefs. Each tribe had one vote, and um, all five tribes had to make a unanimous decision in order to move forward. Um, there were 50 peace chiefs. Um, from the sachems for civil affairs between the tribes. Um, and that's what we call the, the sorry, the chiefs were the sachems. Um, they, they had ceremonial rituals for choosing leaders rather than based on merit. Um, each Iroquois tribe had a castle and that was made of 20 to 30 long houses. Um, and there were uh, smaller settlements in each tribe for fishers and hunters nearby. The, the Iroquois Confederacy throughout this entire group of five different nations, um, they fished, farmed, and hunted, but they mostly farmed, but they did have a good mix. Um, what they farmed was corn, beans, and squash, and they, along with other tribes, developed three sister farming, which was a way of farming to prevent weeds from growing and keeping soil moist or fertile. Um, the women in the Iroquois Confederacy were gatherers. They gathered sap and medicinal herbs. And just to show you, here's a picture of that three sister farming. Um, the squash is grown at the bottom. The beans are grown to kind of be that stalk, or sorry, the corn is grown to be that stalk and the beans grow around that corn. And then we have the Cherokee, one of the largest tribes in the Southeast. The Cherokee are of Iroquois descent. The Cherokee lived in log cabins, not teepees, but the cabins did not have any windows, though they did have a smoke hole in the roof. This was a large, strong tribe and it was split into small sections led by chiefs. The Cherokee were located in the southeast portion of the Appalachian Mountains, so present-day North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee. The Cherokee were highly religious and spiritual, and they did have a good mix of hunting and farming. They farmed corn, beans, and squash as well. They wove baskets, they created pottery, they hunted deer, bears, elk, um, and they had the meat, as well as using the hides for clothing. And then lastly, I'm gonna talk about the Northwest briefly. Um, this is like present day California, um, Washington, those areas. Um, there were societies that supported themselves by hunting and gathering and fishing. Um, and they developed settled communities just like on the East Coast because they were supported by the resources of the ocean. So I'm gonna talk about the Nez Perce. They were located in Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. The Nez Perce were very peaceful unless they were at war. And I know that sounds funny, but they actually were known as very strategic warriors. Um, and uh, you don't want to encounter them if they're at war with you, but they will help their neighbors if they're not at war. Um, they gathered roots like carrots and potatoes. They fished. Um, they gathered berries, pine nuts, and sunflower seeds. And they hunted moose, deer, bear, mountain sheep, and goats, again, adapting to that Northwest environment. All right, if you guys have any questions, please let me know.